Hello everyone and welcome to this week's newsletter. Last Tuesday it was great to welcome students back to the school and while the weather made for some challenging uh, recess and lunch times, semester two classes have all commenced and things are going really well and very smoothly. At the start of term it was terrific to welcome back some new staff and, and some who are returning. Welcome to Eve Betts who's replacing Chrissy Rowland, Tanya O'Toole replacing Catherine Day, Mark Turner replacing Adam Kolak, Teresa Thomas replacing Peter Barker and Jet Matthews replacing Chris Conroy and also in music Bethany Ha is replacing Amy Young at least in her teaching component. During the break, a group of staff visited Kenya and Uganda and spent time at St Joseph's Vocational Secondary School in Kenseka. Students got to hear some of the adventures of the group at the Inclusive Community School Assembly held earlier today. We hope to have a group of our current Year 11 students undertake the same East African immersion after their graduation next year. Also during the break, we had a group walk the Kokoda Track which was a really challenging personal achievement and a really rich cultural experience for those students. So congratulations to all involved. The redevelopment of our arts and technology precinct has commenced and we've sent all families notification of changes regarding access to the college and car parking. As always, student safety is an absolute priority. So in order to assist us keep students safe and ensure smooth student movement at the start and end of the day, we ask that you note the following. If possible, please have your son catch a bus or cycle and walk to school to reduce uh, uh, vehicular traffic in the area. Avoid drop off and pick up in Queens Road, perhaps try Noble Street, Frazier or other local streets if you must pick up. If your son's in Year 12, encourage him not to drive. If drop-off or pick-up in Queens Road is essential, please only use the area adjacent the gym. You might also consider dropping off earlier or delaying afternoon pick-up where possible. We were all greatly saddened last week at the death of former long-serving art teacher Anne Condon. Anne was a brilliant teacher and much-loved colleague. She retired in 2019, but had been a regular in replacement roles over the last few years. We pray for the repose of her soul and extend prayerful support to her family, including her daughter, current art teacher, Claire Riley. Every five years, St Joseph's undergoes a renewal process to confirm our accreditation as an authentic Catholic school in the Edmund Rice tradition. This process is in addition to our accreditation by the Victorian Registration and Qualifications Authority. I'm pleased to report that we have received confirmation. We are now formally accredited as a Catholic school in the Edmund Rice tradition until 2028. The report notes, the students, parents, staff and advisory council are to be commended for our daily commitment to the realisation of an authentic innovative learning community. The results for the 2024 NAPLAN tests have now been shared with students and parents of Year 7 and Year 9. We don't yet have access to statewide results to allow comparison with like schools. But this year we had a very, very high completion rate because we encouraged all students to complete the tests to the best of their ability. This helps us to understand the individual learning needs of each student and that of the cohort. We use the results to identify learning strengths and areas for improvement and to ensure that appropriate learning pathways are in place to meet the future needs of every student. Our Year 7 data was really interesting. It showed that our students are very strong in numeracy and reading but that we still have much work to do in, in improving writing, spelling, grammar and punctuation. Our Year 9 data almost mirrored the Year 7 results, again with students strongest in reading and numeracy. And finally, a reminder to all families regarding school uniform. Little things matter and full and correct uniform is really important from home to school in the morning 
and from school to home in the afternoon. St Joseph's has a brilliant, classy and distinctive uniform of which we can all be proud. But we can only be proud of it if students wear it properly when they're in public. God bless.